let f of x equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 and for x greater or equal to 1 and less than or equal to square root of 2. We're going to find the arc length of f over this interval. So recall that when we have a function f of x defined over the interval x greater or equal to a less than or equal to b and this function is differentiable, the arc length formula is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared. So here we're going to differentiate this function f prime of x is equal to in the denominator we have x plus square root of x squared minus 1 in the numerator we have 1 plus 1 half times x squared minus 1 to the minus 1 half times 2x and so simplifying this this is 1 plus x divided by the square root of x squared minus 1 divided by x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. We want to simplify this further and to do that we'll multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of x squared minus 1. In the numerator we have square root of x squared minus 1 plus x, put this in parentheses, divided by in the denominator x plus square root of x squared minus 1 times square root of x squared minus 1. Notice that in the numerator square root of x squared minus 1 plus x is the same as x plus square root of x squared plus 1 in the denominator. We can now cancel and this leaves 1 divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. That's our derivative. Next step is to square the derivative. So f prime of x squared is just 1 divided by x squared minus 1. And now let's write 1 plus f prime of x squared and simplify this. This is 1 plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1, which is x squared minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1 plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1 and that's equal to x squared divided by x squared minus 1. And now we are ready to integrate to find the arc length. So the integral is going to be uh, from 1 to square root of 2 of the square root of x squared divided by x squared minus 1. And this is equal to the integral from 1 to square root of 2, x divided by square root of x squared minus 1. This is what we call an improper integral. If you've not studied improper integrals, we look at the function we're integrating, which is x divided by square root of x squared minus 1. We're integrating it over the interval from 1 to square root of 2. And we see that this function is undefined at 1, which is part of the interval. Now, improper integral is an integral where we're integrating something over an interval and the function is undefined and at least one of the points inside the interval or one of the endpoints is actually in infinity or minus infinity. So, in our case, if you've not studied improper integrals, it's not going to matter really in this case because we can just go ahead and integrate this and we'll get a final answer. We'll do this by substitution. Let u equal to uh, x squared minus 1. du is equal to 2x dx. So 1 half du is equal to x dx. Also, x is between 1 and the square root of 2. u equals to x squared minus 1. So when x is 1, u is 0, u is greater than or equal to 0. When x is square root of 2, u is 1, so u is less than or equal to 1. And now we can express this as an integral in variable u. It's going to be an integral from 0 to 1. x dx is 1 half du 
and square root of x squared minus 1 is just square root of u. Now this is of course also an improper integral because 1 over square root of u is undefined at 0 and 0 is part of this interval. Nevertheless we could go ahead and integrate. This is 1 half integral from 0 to 1 u to the minus 1 half du which is 1 half u to the 1 half divided by 1 half evaluated from 0 to 1. 1 half in the numerator cancels with 1 half in the denominator plugging in 1 and 0 into square root of u we get the final answer which is 1. So the arc length is equal to 1. Now we're going to derive the same result by using an alternative method. This is an important method to, method to know. So let's go ahead and look at a the setup for this. This is the x-axis and the y-axis. And so consider a curve. And this is A and this is B. And the curve is given by y equals to f of x. So suppose we call C f of A and D f of B. Those will be the values on the y-axis. So this will be C and this will be D. And somehow, if we can solve for x as a function of y and call it x equals to g of y, then the arc length can be computed by integrating from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared. It can also be computed by integrating from c to d of the square root of 1 plus g prime of y squared and this is integrated with respect to y. That's what we're going to do here. Let's bring back our function. Our function was y equals to f of x defined in terms of x natural log of x plus square root of x squared minus 1. It was defined for x greater or equal to 1 less than or equal to square root of 2. So if I plug in 1 for x, f of 1 is 0 and f of square root of 2 plugging that in is the natural log of square root of 2 plus 1. So this 0 is our c and natural log of square root of 2 plus 1 is our d. All we have to do now is take this function and write it as x in terms of y. x is a function of y. So y equals to natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. We'll take e and raise it first to the power y on the left. That's equal to e raised to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. So e to the y is equal to x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. e to the y minus x equals the square root of x squared minus 1. Let's square both sides. e to the y minus x squared is equal to x squared minus 1. e to the y minus x squared equals e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y plus x squared and that's equal to x squared minus 1. So we can immediately cancel x squared and now we can take e to the e to the 2y plus 1 that's equal to 2x e to the y let's rewrite e to the 2y as e to the y times e to the y plus 1 divided by 2 times e to the y and that's equal to x so x now as a function of y let's call it g of y is equal to e to the y times e to the y divided by e to the y is just e to the y. 1 divided by e to the y, that's e to the minus y. And this is divided by 2. And we can write this as 1 half e to the y plus 1 half e to the minus y. Next, let's take the derivative g prime of y. That's 1 half e to the y minus 1 half e to the minus y. Let's now square the this derivative. Let's square g prime of y. So g prime of y squared 
equals one half e to the y minus one half e to the minus y squared. We can write this as one half e to the y minus one half e to the minus y times one half e to the y minus one half e to the minus y and that's one fourth e to the two y minus one fourth minus another one fourth plus one fourth e to the minus two y and this is equal to one over four e to the two y minus one half plus one over four e to the minus two y let's now add one one plus g prime of y squared is one plus one over four e to the two y minus a half plus one over four e to the minus two y and the one here and the minus one half become plus one half so this is one fourth e to the two y plus one half plus one fourth e to the minus two y and the key step here is to recognize that this is a perfect square that's because when you look at what we've done just above here when we have one half e to the y minus one half e to the minus y we end up with this expression with minus one half in the middle when we keep everything the same except one half minus one half is now positive one half we can express this as a perfect square which is one half e to the y plus one half e to the minus y squared and now we can find the arc length it's the integral from zero to natural log of square root of two plus one of the square root of one half e to the y plus one half e to the minus y squared dy because of the square root and square this integral is now the integral from zero to natural log of square root of two plus one of one half e to the y plus one half e to the minus y dy and this is one half e to the y minus one half e to the minus y evaluated from zero to the natural log of square root of two plus one let's go ahead and evaluate this this is equal to plugging in we have one half e to the natural log of square root of two plus one minus one half e to the minus natural log of square root of two plus one minus plugging in zero for y it's just one half minus one half which is zero so this cancels and this is one half times square root of two plus one minus one half e to the natural log of square root of two plus one to the minus one power and now using the properties of exponentials and logs this is one half times square root of two plus one and this is minus one divided by two uh, times square root of two plus one so the common denominator is square root of two plus one two times square root of two plus one all we have to do is simplify this so this is equal to square root of two plus one times square root of two plus one divided by uh, two times square root of two plus one minus one divided by two times square root of two plus one so this is equal to two plus uh, two square root of two plus one minus one divided by uh, two times uh, square root of two plus one the ones cancel and we have exactly two plus two square root of two divided by two square root of two plus two and the final answer is one just like we had when we integrated with respect to x so this is an alternative way to find arc length and you should keep that in mind because once in a while it'll be easier 